Yep. Um, maybe in the first step, uh, if you want to introduce Mayo and your um, your uh, goal with this uh, startup. Of course. Well, um, Mayo started in 2019 in Portugal uh, with me and Rafael, that is the co-founder of Mayo. We both drove, drove electric vehicles back then and we are both software engineers. And we started realizing that we could understand absolutely nothing because we have fast chargers and normal chargers and different types of plugs and one was cheaper than the other. So we were very confused back then. We didn't have um, no technical uh, solution to solve. For example, for you to predict the final price of a charging session, it was a big issue. We had a lot of uh parcels to to wear and we couldn't understand uh, well everything and to, the community start building uh giant spreadsheets to predict the pricing and it was so um less convenient than having some type of software that uh, made the, the all the accounting for you so we started there we we built an app a mobile app very uh, simple that predicted the final price of a charging session And we shared that with the community via social media, with Instagram and Facebook. And suddenly we had more than 1,000 registered users. And we started realizing like, okay, so this is an issue for the whole community. And we just start developing uh, more features that were uh, solving the, the real life scenario issues. And the community answered real well and we just kept growing. Then we, with our uh, users that, uh, well, visit Spain and France and also tourists, we started realizing that the other European countries had a lot of the same pains we had back then. And we realized, okay, maybe we can just uh, internationalize our solution, our software that is uh, going super well here in Portugal. And we will just solve the same issues uh, outside of our borders. And last year we internationalized for Spain and France and we've been growing since then. Yes, great. And I saw that you you are settling partnership with operators uh, like PowerDot. I think you, are, you have a partnership. Do you have other yes. partnerships like this uh, in Europe or it's um, that you can share, of course? Well, uh, PowerDot by now is our only partnership because it's our pro pilot project. So we use Abject and GREV as a roaming platform so we can provide our community more coverage uh, and in a faster way. But we have the goal to reach peer-to-peer -peer connections, not only because they provide us better data quality and it's a big thing for us. We want to provide reliable data for our end user but also because it uh, allows us to reach some better pricing for our end users. So peer-to-peer -peer connection is uh, one of the, uh, our goals, but it's our second phase. So we started with PowerDot, we partnered in the past. Uh, so we made that direct connection and we are improving with them, for example, with the ad hoc charging. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Yes, yes with ad hoc charging, with uh, different types of packages you, in you, pricing. You can explain also for people who are listening. So what is ad hoc charging if you want? If you think it's useful, don't hesitate to, to elaborate. Sorry, I didn't understand the last sentence it cut here. So you, you can uh, explain if you want uh, what is ad hoc, ad hoc charging. I okay, okay. That. Ad hoc charging is a way to charge where you read the QR code that's on the charging station with your uh, smartphone and you just do the whole process online in your browser without needing to have a contract or installing a mobile application. So it allows you to reach every charging station and charge on the go without uh, preparation. So that is it. Uh, but then when you have a, a, a recurrent client, you kind of want them to uh, have more convenience in, during the charging and to monitor all the charging sessions. So we are working with them to reach that type of, of charging convenience where you can just download the app and have all of your uh, accounting and charging sessions in one place. Okay. 
And what you thought about uh, Jira? Do you think it's a roaming system which is uh, which will be there for a long time, or it's a transition uh, system? Transition system. Well, mm -hmm. roaming is in our vision mandatory uh, for a, uh, an excellent user experience. So if you need to install more than one mobile app or have more than one card, I believe the experience is already suffering because you don't do that with your credit card. So why would you do that in electric mobility? So roaming is a necessity uh, in every country in the world, but we are here talking about Europe. Um, I believe that those two companies uh, filled a void in the market, but um, Euro Union, uh, the Europe, Union Europe, Europe well, Union, I'm sorry, I, I lost this word here. Well, Europe is trying to <laughs> build some regulation um, above that to make roaming uh, also mandatory. So I'm not sure what is going to happen with those companies. I really believe they made an excellent job gathering all the CPOs in the market and providing this roaming for players like us, the MSPs, to provide the, uh, an excellent customer experience. Uh, I don't know what the future brings, but I hope the roaming is... Uh, well, will be enforced because it's important for the growth of electric mobility as a market and for the end user to have better experience while charging. Okay. And for electric vehicle drivers in France, what's uh, the, the main feature you can bring with your app? What, what, what they can expect with your app? So the most valuable and different feature we have from our competition is you can predict the final price with your, uh, um, well, it is calculated specifically, specifically for your type of plug and for your car, your vehicle. So we have a lot of variables when charging and calculating the price, especially the ones that are Uh, per minute, when you have a tariff per minute or a different tariff I mean, uh, according to the power of the plug you choose. So there's those variables. And you can just um, say in our app, I want to charge from 20% to 80% and we will provide you the final price. And we say this costs 20 euros and that's it. So you can simulate the price and then you can charge uh, with only the app. You don't really need anything else. And you you get your whole uh, history, history of charging sessions. You can just see your statistics and all of that. And you have, uh, we are building a, a very nice community in France as well, where you can participate by commenting, rating, and all of that uh, interaction builds uh, data for our, for our algorithms. So then we can say, okay, this charging station is, uh, has a rating of two in 10, so just, don't go there because it's offline most of the times and we can provide you all of that information and it actually helps you to avoid some frustration regarding to the infrastructure and the charging network okay and i think you have also the ability to share photos uh, or uh, to to have a uh, nice information about uh, about each uh, charging point Exactly. And uh, what do you think about the quality of the network right now? I think you have the data uh, in your uh, in your software. Maybe in France yes, if we... you have, and uh, in Europe in, uh, if you have also. Yes. Um, well, the network is expanding uh, really well, although it's never enough for the end user because we always want some more charging stations to um, to avoid having to wait in line. Um, the only thing I see that is very different in France is that we have almost half of a network that requires an RFID card to charge instead of a remote application or a remote system. So for us, this is the thing that will change over time, hopefully. Um, it's not the best because it doesn't allow the user to just charge with a platform that allows roaming for everyone. So uh, it's not incredible. I hope it changes soon and the CPOs update their software to allow the charging stations to, to have uh, external communication with the world, with the internet. So those are, that is the main uh, thing I would like to see improving because it's very important for the end user. But France has one of the most um, 
promising rates of growth in the infrastructure. We have like smaller countries like Portugal. We, we have a better uh, density of the network, but because we are a very small country. And then we have uh, geographically, geographically speaking, we have Spain that's uh, also growing, but in a lower rate. And France is also um, doing a very good job with some incentives. And uh, I believe the community is responding very well to the electric mobility. So I think the future brings very good news for the electric mobility. Great, great. Um, I don't know if you have a specific point to share, but for me, uh, I have a lot of points, so uh, I I don't have any, any more questions, but if you have uh, one specific point to share, you, you can do it. Okay, so uh, I, we also know that uh, uh, domestic charging is a uh, pretty common reality in France and in whole, the whole Europe. I believe that's a reality uh, like more than 90% in some countries because electric mobility started um, a few years ago. So we have a lot of users that own a house and can charge at home. I believe this number will decrease over time because we will be having more users living in apartments and so not so convenient to have the home charging. So I also believe there's a lot to be done uh, in domestic charging because you will can have your solar panels, produce your own energy, store it, then uh, charge your vehicle with that energy and even use your vehicle to well um, provide power for your home and all of that te technology, I believe, will fill uh, a void in the market as well. So as a company, we are also working in the domestic environment. We believe there's a lot to be done and a lot of convenience to bring to our um, users. And uh, they are uh, a lot by now, but, uh, you know, in the future, there will be less and the public infrastructure, of course, will be a main role for all of those users. So um, I think that's it. Uh, we work for companies, for the end users uh, regarding they charge in the public road or at home or in the company. Our vision for electric mobility is as the charging can be done everywhere, you just uh, need to have one point of contact that can be an app or even better, you just plug the cable and it charges and you just set up one time and you don't need to do anything else. So our work is always to remove effort from the end user and simplify electric mobility wherever you are. Uh, regarding the last point, how you can help to um, to to go through a plug and charge system? How Mayo can help um, drivers? Sure. Uh, plug and charge is a protocol that requires hardware in the first place, and we are a software company. So we are we have a project pilot going on as well, uh, but this hardware is not so um, cheap as we like to just spread all over Europe. As we were talking just now, we, we still don't have... Um, roaming across all networks. So we would like to see those 50% of charging points communicating with the internet first, and then we move forward. But we, I believe we are being very successful in our pilot projects, and we believe before the charge and plug becomes a massive reality, we can improve the experience, um, and we'll, we'll tell that very soon. Okay, nice. Thank you very much. Um, for me, it's, uh, it's okay, so have a nice day. And uh, I will share you with too. you the, the results. Okay, nice to meet you. And let me know if anything uh, you need, okay? Thank you very much. Thank Have a nice bye. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.